Hi everybody and welcome back to Sean Cameron Photography. Now, after all the hype of the previous four Nikon Z9 teaser videos, I was really looking forward to hearing some confirmed statistics. Is it an upgraded Z6 II or a mirrorless D5? Well, we got there in the, in the end, didn't we? Eventually. To begin with though, we kept hearing it's unstoppable. We heard that word a lot through the, throughout the video that from the start added some strong headlines to confirm the messages that the previous videos, those teaser videos, had only ever hinted at. And do you know something? I have to say that largely we were all correct. Okay, let's go through those initial headlines. As I say, they made up the first part of the show. I'll fill them in as we go with more detailed information that was given to us later on by Mark Cruz, a Nikon senior manager, product DCIL. No, I don't know either. Maybe you do. Let me know. Anyway, the first headline was powerful AF. I thought, OK, that's a relief. It's what we've all been worried about, isn't it? We were then told that the Z9 will be the first to have 3D tracking in a Nikon mirrorless camera anyway. Of course, that's been around since the days of the D3, which, do you know, I find, I find quite profound as Nikon supporters, myself included, are hoping that the Z9 is in fact a D3 moment for Nikon. A camera to take the company out of the technical wilderness that some feel it's been stuck in for some time. Me included, once again. Anyway, back to the 3D tracking. I personally haven't found the 3D to be particularly reliable, so I don't tend to use it. And of course, that doesn't mean to say that Nikon haven't perfected it in the Z9. In fact, it sounds like they have. Because the next intriguing focus-related headline was one setting that detects nine subject types. Nine different subject types. On screen, we then saw pictures of a lady in sunglasses, a cheetah cub, a bird of some kind, my apologies, an aeroplane, a motorbike. I was amused that along the bottom in small writing was as of October 28th, 2021, amongst mirrorless cameras based on Nikon research, animal detection also works for animals similar to dogs, cats, and birds. For example, a cheetah that resembles a cat. Makes sense, I guess. I wonder how a meerkat fits into all that. Okay. Later on, we found out that these nine subject types are in fact people, dog, cat, bird, car, motorbike, bicycle, train, and planes. I think we've heard in the grapevine that there was no mechanical shutter in the camera. I guess that's how we get now get up to 120 frames per second. Continuous shooting. That's using 11 megapixel JPEGs. We get 30 frames per second with full resolution JPEGs and 20 frames a second with fine JPEGs or high efficiency RAW, which apparently retains the high resolution of the file, but shrinks that file by as much as a third of the size, thanks to a new algorithm. I'm quoting word for word here, it's not my words. The only proviso to this stunning new technology was the addition of the phrase, the quality is almost identical, which was said at the end of that section. Almost identical? Never mind. Next one, real live viewfinder. Smoothness of the viewfinder image will depend on settings such as shutter, speed, etc. Okay, fair enough. Now, did you notice that Nikon went in punching again? They came out punching. Competitors EVF skips and repeats some frames. Cheeky, eh? Unfortunately, we had no EVF information, so I don't know who it was aimed at. But anyway, later on, we got a chap called Jeff Pashud, who talks about a revolutionary no blackout viewfinder. Kenjiro Matsuo also agreed, describing it as revolutionary. Now, I know there's been a few comments on my channel about this recently, especially when shooting birds in flight. Now, from my point of view, it's not the moment of darkness. I'm used to that, getting using DSLRs and SLRs before that. It's not that that's a problem. It's the slideshow effect that we get with the current previous Z cameras. 
It's really bad. It feels like you're watching a flick book with missing pages. An awful lot of missing pages. Now I'm not convinced that by seeing everything in real time, either, for, either photographer can really claim that it will help them nail the decisive moment. Unless they're using uh, single release mo mode, so they're taking one photograph at a time, which I think is pretty unlikely. But it will certainly help in tracking the object whilst you're firing away, hammering away at 120 frames per second. Okay, next headline, dual stream technology. XP7 processes live view and recording data in parallel. Now I'll tell you what, that's interesting, isn't it? This is how they get real time on the viewfinder. Though I was a bit disappointed to hear that the autofocus faster acquisition was developed in tandem with the XP7 processor and the stacked sensor, the new stack sensor. That probably means there's no chance of this technology washing down to the Z62 and the Z72 then. Okay, never mind. But let's talk about the sensor. We were well into the video by the time 45 megapixels were even mentioned. Yes, the Z9 has 45 megapixel stacked sensor. That's exciting and powerful. In fact, that's the headline for me. 20 frames per second with a 45 megapixel sensor. I feel like I've gone to sleep in a dinghy and woken up on the QE2. Just imagine it. It can mean that I don't need separate sports and studio cameras. That's great. Other headlines were clear subject confirmation in bright scenes with a new quad VGA panel, so no silhouettes or squinting required. High performance video, up to 125 minutes, non-stop 8K UHD video. We knew about that, we're already impressed. Superior ergonomics and reliability. The four axis tilting monitor with vertical UI enhanced vertical shooting, I actually quite like that. The world's fastest scanning speed. Remember, no ma mechanical shutter, remember? Incredible Nikon flagship reliability, robustness. Equivalent to the D6, and it now performs down to minus 10 centigrade. Thorough sealing lets you keep shooting in dust or sudden rain. Is sudden rain worse than predicted rain? I don't know. Anyway. It's also got something called VR lock. It's a great idea that stops the sensor from bouncing around while you're traveling. NX Tether and NX Mobile Air, which is sexy new software. Do you know, it was a relief to find that I can still use my old XQD cards, though how long it will be before I'm tempted by the CF Express Type B cards that they're talking about. I'm hoping the same will be true for the D5 batteries. In fact, I think I hear that it should be. Okay, there's now a dedicated sensor shield. To be honest now, that's more than welcome, is it not? How vulnerable are our little mirrorless sensors? I don't even like changing lenses when I'm out in the field, unless I absolutely have to. And something I hadn't even thought of with the DSLRs. Nikon's new shield is a simple but stunning idea. I am surprised though that you apparently you have to program the camera to do it. You'd have thought that would happen automatically, but that's what it looked like on the video. Okay, the body looks pretty robust, so it's definitely not an upgraded Z6 II, but a truly tough pro camera. Now, I didn't get everything I wanted, but I think I got more than I expected. I think we got more than, I, than we expected. So, personally speaking, what does the future hold for me? Well, I guess I'm still going to be a Nikon shooter then. Bring on the Z9. Thank you so much for joining me, and you know what I'm going to say, if you liked it, then click that old like button, and if you really liked it, hammer the, the subscribe button. I keep saying it, and I keep saying that it means an awful lot to me, and it does. And by now, you've probably switched off, so I'll stop talking. Take care, see you soon, and let's see if there's any more news about it. Take care.